And welcome back to The Breakfast uh, on PLUS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today is going to be directed mostly at you, the citizen. A lot of times Nigerians don't like to be told that they are to blame for a bad government. Uh, government. Um, you know, every now and then when you hear statements like citizens get the government that they deserve, it hurts a lot of Nigerians because they believe that they are genuinely good people and they don't deserve to have a government in power that doesn't, um, you know, work for them. Um, and they, of course, are completely brilliant, hardworking Nigerians that excel in any other part of the world. But back home, it's a challenge. And so Nigerians don't like to be told that they deserve the government um, or, you know, that they have in power. But the discussion we're having this morning is the role of the citizen in nation building. And we're speaking this morning, of course, uh, thanks to G.D. Johnson for staying uh, with us uh, so far. Uh, and of course, we're also going to be joined via Zoom by Mark Adebayo, who's a public affairs analyst. Good morning to Mr. Adebayo. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Plus TV Africa. Thank you for having Good me. Good to see you. All right, so I'm going to start with you um, before we get to uh, GD Johnson. Mr. Adebayo, do you agree with the narrative that citizens get the government that they deserve, and that's including Nigerians? Do they get the government that they truly deserve? Well, uh, I disagree. That is a sociological blackmail propounded by the ruling cliques uh, of Nigeria, that the people deserve the kind of government they, they have. You see, uh, one of the things that put a lie to that post, po position and postulation is the fact that uh, it is only when citizens are laid back and lethargic and wouldn't, I couldn't care less about how they are ruled or misruled or misgoverned, that you can say, okay, they deserve the kind of government they have. Okay, let me give you an instance. The NSAS protest, for instance, look at how it, it came out. Look at how it ended. So look at how it pan out. You, uh, the, the Nigerian youth confronted a government that, that was absolutely intolerant of criticism or opposition and came out heavily down on the youth, killed many of them, and rest of that. In Nigeria, we have not, uh, I keep saying it, we have not been fortunate to have leaders of sterling qualities, patriotic, committed, visionary, capable, competent, and uh, you know, progressive in thinking. We have not been able to, to have that in Nigeria. We have not been able to have leaders in the mood of people that are shaping the United Arab Emirates. We have not been able to have leaders that are that shaped post post Second World War France and other European countries, other European countries. We have not been lucky enough to have leaders in the mood of Thomas Sankara. We have not been have we have not been lucky to have leaders in the mood of uh, Nelson Mandela. We have not been lucky to have the leaders in the mood of the people that are shaping that have shaped Singapore into what it has become today. Despite the fact that we are in the same league with those countries. It is quite un unfortunate. You know, you can only blame citizens if they have the capacity and the power to be able to elect who they duly uh, des uh, desire. You understand? Well, but in a situation where your electoral system, electoral processes have been compromised, where uh, electoral victory goes to the highest bidder, you cannot hold the citizens responsible in that respect. That is not to say that the citizens do not have a responsibility to even to also push back on such, uh, uh, on such shenanigans. We have a responsibility. Even to reject your 1,000 naira, to reject your 500 naira, to suffer for four years, we have a responsibility to, like it happened uh, in Ghana, where politicians brought rice and clothes, and the citizens were throwing it back at them. We need to get to that level in Nigeria. I don't All think right. we are going to get there in 2023. Nigerians are good. Some of us are at the level of civil society, even at the level of political opposition, we are mobilizing Nigerians, synthesizing them, that look, oh, don't collect one Congo of rice and 500 naira to suffer for another four years. I think we have suffered enough in this country for people to come to, to realization that, look, 500 naira cannot save you. 1, 000, in fact, 1 million naira cannot save you from yeah. four years of suffering. We need to move right. beyond that. All right, Mr. Adebayo, I'm going to have uh, Jide Johnson also respond to the same question, you know, with regards, you know, um, if, if Nigerian citizens get the government that they truly deserve. I or agree is with different. that statement in totality because the fundamental principle of democracy rests with citizens. That's democracy without democracy is only Nigerian citizen that can vote in an election. The ultimate authority, that's the sovereignty of democratic society, rests with the citizenry. 
And um, the question we need to ask is that, what is the level of the participation of the citizenry in the democratic process? What is the level of the engagement of the elites among the citizenry in the democratic process? What is the involvement of those that are involved with special interest groups, civil society, labor groups, and the rest of its opinion leaders, public opinion leaders, of the citizenry in the democratic process? Because in democracy, he said, is the rule of the majority. The citizen is not the rule by the gun is the rule by the people. We said democracy is government of the people, by the people, for the people. And if the people don't own, which is the citizen, if they don't own the polity, if they don't own it, then we have the kind of system which we have. Now, I'll give you an example. You have a situation in Lagos State where five million people registered to vote. How many people came out to vote? People take the PVC card and you know what? My vote does not count. Is that not the general? a pathetical statement that we receive from people. You take, for example, in Ekiti State, and in Ekiti State, whereby the governor was elected with less than 200,000 votes. You have a situation whereby in Oshun State, where the governor was elected less than, with less than 400,000 votes, and you look at the, 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 the voters. So as far as I'm concerned, you get the type of government you deserve. Just imagine if 60% or 70% of the citizen turn out to vote. It's because they know quite well that you not turn out to vote. That's why the little ones that turn out to vote, they use the 50 naira, the rice, the 5,000, to go and mobilize those people. So if we engage, if myself and my colleague on the other end, if we engage in citizen education, in citizen mobilization, they will collect the money like he said in Ghana. I will not vote for the country. So we deserve the type of government we get because the ultimate power in democracy lies with the citizen. Beyond the legal status that the citizen right, which is a citizen that is bestowed on you, either by birth or by naturalization or what have you, yes. which gives you the qualification, the franchise to vote and to be voted for once you are 18 and above, and there are some certain offices that require some certain age qualification, that power lies with the citizen. And as far as I'm concerned, it is... We blame ourselves for whatever type of government that we have because a lot of people on the day of the election will be reading newspaper and you only blame yourself for the type of government you have. You have lost the, your right of complaint if you don't participate in the process. And what we need to do for us to build this democracy is to increase the participation. Not only increase the participation, also increase the education of the people because if the people are enlightened, they are educated, I'm sure we rescue back our society back from the carpet baggers that have, that, have, that have taken over our country. Okay, so um, let's also look at the fact that, you know, governments since independence have made several efforts targeted at, you know, nation building. And of course, after the civil war as well, uh, you've also had cases where, um, you know, the integration of the society, you had the no victor, no vanquish, which gave rise to the three hours, and the establishment of the NYS scheme amongst others. These are some efforts that government has made over time, uh, you know, to build the nation. But uh, let's look at um, how, because over time, a lot of people believe that nation building is elitist, it's just meant for uh, the political class and those who actually call the shot. Uh, how can citizens be involved in nation building? Let's take the issue of NYS, for example. It was done to build about national integration and that people are post posted outside of their home state to other parts of Nigeria. But I asked, um, the goal and the essence of NYC has been defeated because the process is manipulated here and there and people have the opportunity. In the past, you don't have right to change wherever you are posted to, but under any guise now, um, yeah. I served outside of Lagos and I'm sure you served outside of your domain state. Probably that's one of the opportunity that gave us that opportunity to go outside of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our environment, of our locality. As far as I'm concerned, that was designed to build national unity. However, we have seen a situation whereby that has also been a tool of promoting national disunity. Because I tell you this, and I stand to be challenged. How often do you see people from the core north coming to the core south to come and, to come and serve? I deal with coppers every now and then. How often? How often do you see that people from the far north are coming? They don't serve in the south. 
They don't. It's there. The records are in the public domain. So if you are really interested in nation building, because um, the youth of the nation, that's why it's called national youth. We said the youth is the future. Now, if you build an integration amongst the youth, they have an holistic view. They don't have a myopic view um, of, of their region, of their tribe, of their religion, of their ethnicity. Then they have an holistic view that Nigeria is beyond their state of origin. Nigeria is beyond their locality. And there are other people, and there are other places in Nigeria, and there are other culture that we could learn from one another. So as far as um, I agree with you, nation building is not meant for government, alone; it's meant for the citizenry. We have policies that we have developed, like the NYC, which I identify. We have used it rather than to build unity, we have used it to cause disunity. Because if you have an average youth, they've lost interest. In the, in the National Youth Service Scheme, unlike in the past. When you talk to people that are 60s, that are 70s, that are 60s and above, and they tell you their experiences of their youth service when they went, they tell you with nostalgia. Some, as a result of National Youth Service, settled in the North, where they went to. Some settled in the South, as a result of National Youth Took up employment in places they never imagined they could ever take employment for, because they were received Politics has not divided us. Religion has not divided us as that divided us now. All right. yeah. um, Mr. Debayo, let's also bring you in you know, with regards to nation building. Um, the conversation really is you know, to know what role Nigerian citizens can play. Um, uh, Mr. Um, or Gilly Johnson here has uh, spoken about the lackluster attitude that Nigerians have with regards to the electoral process. Um, but in, in a general idea, what would you, you know, describe as the role that the citizens should have in building Nigeria. If we're going to take this country forward, we have elections coming in 2023, besides the electoral process even, um, what role should the Nigerian citizens in general play? Uh, <clears throat> first, I refuse to blame the victims for the commission of the crime. Nigerians, because of the weaponization of poverty, Nigerians have been subdued by the ruling cliques. And so, oftentimes, people who say they don't want to go out to vote just believe that you know, it is not enough to vote, but your vote must count. So, and that is the responsibility of these institutions that are vested with the authority and the powers to ensure that we have free, fair, and credible elections in this country. You know, we have had, it. look at June 12th, 1993. We had the free, fair, credible election, but what, what became out of it? The ruling clique frustrated it and, and not and, and allowed it. So, would you blame the citizens for that? So, most of the time, see, when people vote, you know, there's letter, the letter you will come in, when people discover that, their votes uh, do not count. Yes, of course, the citizens have a responsibility to hold the, I believe, for example, that the citizens, the primary responsibility of the citizen is to ensure that you don't allow yourself to be misruled, and then you need to push back. You understand? But there also, there's a limit, because there will be state authorities and apartheid that will be unleashed on you to ensure that uh, you fall in line. Uh, I, as a spirit of revolutionary history, actually, I believe that uh, the citizens must always rise up to ensure that they are not misruled. You know, let, let, let's go, uh, I want to support his uh, position on the issue of NYC. For me, I believe that uh, the NYC scheme has, over, uh, has uh, uh, overstayed its usefulness. It's no longer as it, as it was. For me, personally, I would never allow any of my children to go and serve up not. I would not allow any of my children, no matter what. I, they, I would rather, they would rather not serve than for them to go to the north and serve because of the kind of... Uh, Terrible things that were happening. Even before the Boko Haram insurgency, you know, there were times that, you know, they, they would see uh, female coppers in the, you know, a lot of things were happening to, to people up north when they would go and serve. And he said that uh, people were from the corner were not coming to the south to serve. Why should I send any of my children to go there and serve? I've told any of my, even the one that I have, have great, uh, graduated, I ensure that they did not go. So okay. they did not go to, to Ms. places Ms. where they are. Where their security will not be guaranteed, you know, uh, uh, I, I will not send my children to where to a place where they will serve and die. They have yeah, to serve. Debar, so, so we don't deviate, you know, too far from the focus, you know. So I, I, you know, I, I want us to, you know, really focus on what the role of the Nigerian citizen should be, and that's why I also earlier mentioned, aside the electoral process, because that has, of course, been established. If Nigerians do not vote, then they shouldn't complain, you know. So uh, aside the electoral process. What should be the role of the Nigerian citizen in making Nigeria great again? One of the, one of the major and uh, crucial roles that we must play now, especially at the kind of uh, crossroads that we are as a country now, is not only that for people to vote, but also must come fast for votes to be voted for. You know, 
Uh, the other day I was uh, I was at a, a forum and people were coming out. They were mentioning a uh, all the people that have come out to say they want to run for president. This one they say is corrupt. This one they say is incompetent. This one they say uh, he, he, he does not have certificate. This one they say so they. All the people, the prominent foreigners, they measure them I and mean, they condemn them one by one. And I, I then stood up and I asked a question. Who are we voting for? Okay, assuming, without considering that all these ones that you have said, and uh, we have mentioned they are not they are not qualified to rule a job for one reason or the other, for one baggage or the other. Are you running? He said he's not running. Okay, who is running? Who is that credible Nigerian that is running, that has come out now? He started mentioning some names. You know, and I said, are those names, have they come out to say they want to contest? So, you see, the thing is that, if... It, it, Nigerians will have to pick, you know, that's something that Franz Fanon called a circle of certainty. We'll have to pick from a circle of certainty if the so-called credible, honest, and patriotic Nigerians do not come out to contest for elections. And you say, if you mention this one, no, he was corrupt. You see this one? This one is bad. This one is not patriotic. We can't trust this one. We can't. And these are the people who are coming out to say they want to contest, contest for the presidency and the governorship of this country. So, how do you, if the people that claim to be, to be credible, do not come out. People who claim to be patriotic, people who claim to be clean, and they are incorruptible. If they are sitting back and they are not coming out to, to come and contest, then you know you leave Nigeria with no choice because you cannot vote for somebody who does not contest. If those of you sitting in the studio there and I here refuse to contest in an election, and yeah. we condemn people come out to contest, then we also lack the the, the right to condemn people because you have to vote for people who are coming out. Uh, there are incredible people in this country. There are great individuals in this country. There are capable people in this country who can rule this country and manage our diversity in a far better way than the way we are being misruled. But where are they? Because of their elitist arrogance and because they, have, they, are, they, they, they live within a, a cocoon of comfort that will collapse in the country, God forbid, if the country should collapse, they refuse to come out. There are many of them. I don't want to mention names. There are people... There are people that some of us have even approached to come out and contest. You know one ridiculous excuse that one of them gave? He said, people who are governors now are in their 40s and this and that, that he, in his 50s, he, he, should, not, he should not be seen uh, contesting for governorship. And we believe that he, 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 he was in a position to rescue his state, to govern very well because he associated. Many of the elite, elites are absolutely, you know, uh, you know uh, sort of distant from the from the from, from the from the their social environment, and they do not understand the fact that if they do not participate, because he mentioned participation the other time, if they, he does not participate, if you believe you you can do better, why are you not contesting? We will continue to vote for these people, these ruling cliques, because I don't call them ruling class. They, these ruling cliques who have been holding us hostage from independence to date. If the good people refuse to come, the so-called good people refuse to come out and contest. All right. Okay, I, um, so... Uh, I think that uh, I need to declare for the presidency just on the line. Just to uh, agree with what he has said, it's important that as a citizen you have a right to vote and to be voted for. We need credit people to come. If you don't provide yourself that opportunity, that platform, we can. And we also need our citizen to join the political parties. Every one of us, if we join the political parties, there are two major political parties. Let's assume credible Nigerians go and occupy dominate this party. You rescue the party structure. The party structure starts from the world, from the local government. That's where they are. these are the power centers. So we need citizens to be members of these political parties. When we are members of these political you can reform the polit political parties are the platform through which you recruit people in public governance. You can't seek there's no independent candidature. Now there are parties, two major parties. We are calling on the citizens, join this party, register to be members of this party, seek elective offices within this party. Just imagine if six million Lagosians are members. You know, in America, the moment you get there, you register, register as what? As a Democrat, Republican, Republican or an independent. Yes. Now, from, 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 from those data, you know which party is stronger. So we need to have that in our party. Probably we... We need to legislate on that, that as a Nigerian, at a certain age, you must be a member of a political party. That's because the citizen needs to own the polity. Beyond voting, you also need to present yourself for voting. Also, we also need to examine the conduct of public officials. Why, Osaru, if we leave this studio, are they going to clap for us for doing this job? I'm asking you. Merci. Now, why should I clap for a governor 
We need to. Why should we clap for a governor for constructing a road? Have you seen the Prime Minister of Britain commissioning a road before? Have you seen the President of the United States of America commissioning a road before? Have you seen a mayor commissioning a road? It is in Nigeria that people will throw parties, extravagant party, to commission a road, and then they will have a should be, and they will start clapping their hand to for the person that offered himself for service that said, "I will do this job." And you are electing me to do this job. So I will not take care of my clothes. I will not take care of the food I will eat. I will not take care of the houses I'm going to live in. You are going to provide all of that for me. In order for me to make life comfortable for you. Yet, you see people okay, clapping. Uh, but Judy Johnson, for the want of time, because in no time, we're, we're just going to wrap it up here. And uh, the question here is, how can citizens be involved in nation building where there are policies that would constantly... Um, you know, want to divide us as a people. For instance, uh, the rotational kind of government that we practice, especially, you know, during elections, saying, oh, the power has to go to, um, you know, the north. It has to come to the south. It's the turn for uh, the north to produce a president. And then you also want to look at some quota systems, especially in the educational sector. And then even as much as we, we think that some of these policies are supposed to unite the people and also... Um, ensure equality. And so most times you find that that uh, state of origin reflects in almost everything. So you get to a different parts of you know, the country and then you're being asked, uh, because of the quota system or some of these policies, uh, you're constantly being asked to state where you're from. So how can you know, citizens be involved in nation building where you have policies already or practices by government, whether or not they are constitutionally recognized, are just meant to you know, further divide us as a people? In Nigeria, you are recognized with three identities. We need to remove those identities and have one identity to be recognized as a Nigerian. In Nigeria, you are an indigenous of a local government, an origin of a state, and a citizen of Nigeria. Those are the three identities we have. An indigenous of a local government, an origin of the state, that's your state of origin, and then you have citizen of Nigeria. You see that we place citizenship on the third pedestal. We need to remove those two if we really want to move forward in this country. For us to be first and foremost identified as a Nigerian, we need to remove state of origin. I used to joke with a, with a senior colleague that was born in the, in the 60s, in the early 60s, early 60s, and I said, you know what, citizen, before you are in Nigeria, you are in Southern Protectorate. From Southern Protectorate, you move to Eastern region, from Eastern region, you move to Mid-Eastern State. From Mid-Eastern State, you move to Cross River State. From Cross River State, you move to Aquaibom State. What's your identity? In your lifetime, Nigeria has given you different types of identity across, 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 across board. So we need to, if we really want to build this nation, we go the Rwandan way. What is the Rwandan way? They remove the ethnic coloration. You don't identify yourself that you are Utu or, or Tutsi, you are, you are Rwanda. Do Americans identify themselves by states? Said, I'm an American citizen. I'm a British citizen. And I think that for us to really build this nation, we must identify ourselves as a citizen of Nigeria, not as an origin of a state. And if you take that to what you have said, who, who believes in rotational presence? We must remove this quota system and the rest of it. Rather than help us, it has further divided us. And that's why Kuyazu could go, the governor of Abia State could go to the president and say it's the turn of the southeast. Who has the president's help? We presidency coming to I'm from the southwest. Has the presidency helped Ogun State? The president of Nigeria, Obasanjo, was from Ogun State for eight years. The vice president is from Ikenna. He will spend eight years there. Has he helped Ogun State? Presidency has gone to Kasina twice. Has he helped Kasina State? Presidency has gone to Bayesa State. Has he helped Bayesa State? I don't care where the presidency comes from. Well, so so how, then, as... how then do we now expect, you know, um, nation building in the midst of all of these obstacles that we have? Is in the our involvement politics? of the citizenry, the participation, the participation of the citizenry in the body politics. We must own the body politic. That's why join a political party. Vote in the primaries of the party. Vote in the main election. Be interested in what happens to you. Ask questions. We can write petition. People know things and they are not interested. You can, for example, my House of Rep member went to the House of Rep. He only had one house before going to the House of Rep. Now he's in the House of Rep. He has 20 houses. Our petition, we must have. Citizen must. Our petition. This guy, 
you know the history. We all know ourselves in our community. And so it's the right of citizen. One of the responsibilities of citizen is to petition. There's a document I'll share with you. Responsibility of citizen is to petition. You can write, this guy owns one house. Now he's owning 10 houses. This guy used to drive one car. He's owning 10 cars. Now you petition. In the past, in the 60s, in the 70s, people report their neighbors to the police. Yes or no? Very true. And when they report their neighbors to... So we must get back to that. And that can only come also from the police giving confidence back to the people. The police doing their job and the judiciary doing their job. Because all of these are the rights of the citizen. Once we protect the rights of the citizen, the responsibility of the citizen uh, will follow suit. I, I want to bring back uh, Mark Adebayo. Um, Mr. Adebayo, will, will it be fair, or uh, will, will this argument uh, be justified if a citizen says, the reason I don't care so much or I don't want to involve myself in you know, Nigeria's affairs or in the voting process or in questioning um, you know, excessive wealth of my leaders or you know, my National Assembly members and the likes, the reason I don't want to bother myself, you know, as to whether a governor, you know, has um, used billions of naira to build a road that could have been built with a hundred million naira, is really because Nigeria hasn't shown me that it loves me. And so I cannot, in, in that way, bother myself with caring, you know, about Nigeria. Um, would that be a fair argument for a Nigerian citizen? Absolutely not. I think it's self-defeatist. It is retrogressive thinking. To make that, that anybody will come to that conclusion. You know, the thing is that uh, just like the Bible says, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence taken by force. It's the same thing with the political kingdom, as I always said. You know, you cannot sit back. You know, the kind of the kind of um, lethargy that you know, if the kind of energy that Nigerians bring into issue of religion and ethnicity when we discuss it with such vigor and, and fervency, if we showed so much interest, in fact, as little as fifty percent of it in the in the affairs of our country, we will not, we will not have people rogues ruling us. You understand me? We, the, the, the number one responsibility of a citizen nation building is to hold your leaders accountable. We are not doing that enough in this country. And it is also part of the elitist uh, conspiracy uh, that, that we are not educating our people enough. You see, you know, it is easier now to populate a church than to populate a political party. Because what happens is this, you know, you go to, to campaign. One of the things, some people have joined politics and are, 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 are run out of it. Look at the labor who just came back. He just returned to politics. He ran away after 2011 because of what he, what he saw. What really happens is that when Nigerians are behaving like if, because uh, Mr. Joseph says he, maybe he should go and run for presidency. The issue is that many good will, uh, people with good will, with good art, want to run for president, but Nigerians also will demand money from you to vote for you. And that is a bad attitude. You understand? It's like if you have a prisoner. Nigerians are behaving, behaving like prisoners. Who somebody comes to say, I want to bail you out. And the prisoner is saying that, except you pay me, I will not come out of this prison. We must change that mentality. And it is the responsibility of the civil society to ensure that we campaign vociferously to ensure that people are politically educated enough to understand the fact that you cannot sell your food. You cannot sell your conscience. You cannot yeah. sell your future. You cannot sell your children. Because by w doing that... Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be easier to convince a Nigerian uh, to do these things if that Nigerian believes that Nigeria is worth fighting for? It is uh, it's not something that you can do in a GV. I, 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 we need to really, it, it, it will take a lot of time, a lot of energy and commitment and devotion and dedication to be able to bring Nigerians to begin to trust in Nigeria. A lot of people have lost trust. They have lost belief in, in Nigeria. They have lost faith in Nigeria. And we need to rebuild that faith. You understand? Especially in the last uh, six or so years, we are, you know, we have never been this divided uh, as in, we have like returned to pre citizens era of absolute distrust among ourselves. We need to be rebuilt trust. As whoever is going to become Nigeria's next president, the number one assignment that he has to do is to reunite this country and to ensure that we, we become colorblind to the issue of ethnicity and religion so that we can build this country together. This is a great country that God has bestowed on us. I think all of us must come together in, in one united, committed, and dedicated and patriotic endeavor to ensure that this country is put back on the uh, on the road to greatness. We are a great I'm not country. Sure, I'm not sure the likelihood of that.
Uh, Julie Johnson, if you can, in one minute, please also could respond to my question. So, Mercy Johnson, I, should, would, a Niger, would it be fair for Nigerian to have that argument? That Nigeria has not shown me any love, hasn't shown me any care, and so I would not bother myself, I wouldn't kill myself. I wouldn't go out to question any government because, you know, the government will sponsor 500 naira anti-protesters uh, uh, um, anti, um, uh, against me, R random things like that. Can an Nigerian have that argument? Yeah, we, well, we, we could have that argument, but what we should call for is a structure. A structure that gives power back to the people and what of what the present political class the ruling class has done is to have systematic annihilation of the grassroots destruction of the local government now with where power comes from now we are now operating a feudalistic democracy whereby somebody will sit either in abuja or will sit somewhere in ekoi and will dictate who becomes the local government chairman who becomes the house of assembly member who becomes the house of rep members and everybody would defer back to this Lord and Master, whereas power used to come from the base. If we, until we have that structure, the Nigerian will still feel frustrated as they are feeling. Until the power comes from the base, there's nothing that grows from the top. Yeah. Power and democracy. I was having a short conversation with one young, one young chap. I said, in this our local government, if they allow us to decide and to dictate what happens in local government, we know ourselves. We know who can rule and who should be our local government. Our Absolutely. local government can be a model local government. Like, you have, like a city, you have United States of America. But I said, you know what? They will not allow that to thrive because the feudal lords do not want democracy. And feudal lords want servants. They don't want citizens. And that's the that situation we have found ourselves. Okay, so I know that, um, you know, we probably talked about um, the, the kind of leaders we have, leaders that we deserve. But there's also other arguments that say that, um, you know, the kind of leaders we have is a reflection of the people that we are. So if you have corrupt leaders, it therefore is a reflection that the people are corrupt. And if you have leaders that are, you know, divided towards uh, ethnic differences, it therefore shows that uh, we're also um, that, those kind of persons. So because uh, we, we throw up the kind of leaders that we have. Do you agree with this postulation that uh, because we have corrupt leaders, we're also corrupt persons? All right. So hold on. Uh, that's a you know brilliant question. I think both uh, guests would have to respond to that. But we need to get updates on the uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway uh, accident, uh, multiple accident that uh, occurred uh, very in the early hours of this morning. Uh, we'll of course uh, share with you some pictures. Uh, there are reports that people are scooping petrol uh, from one of the tankers that of course uh, was involved in the accident. And so we'll quickly get to share some of those uh, pictures with you this morning. Uh, on the breakfast. Uh, once again, of course, it's from the Otedola Bridge uh, accident and uh, reports reaching us say that citizens are taking advantage of the situation and scooping uh, petrol from one of the tankers that was involved in the accident. Those are the latest updates on uh, that. Uh, of course, uh, we would continue to follow up and share with you every... Oh, goodness. Um, uh, well, you know, there, there you have it. Um, Nigerian citizen taking what he believes is rightfully his. Uh, and of course, uh, we have uh, one of our cameramen uh, present there. Uh, Mr. Kufre, can you hear us clearly? I'm in clear. All right, so quickly share with us what uh, seems to be going on there. We see someone with a small keg and a little basin on his head. What's uh, the current uh, situation over there? Um... If I hear you clearly, the current situation going on now is that um, young men are salvaging fuel. You see them collecting fuel from the tanker that uh, turned upside down, and the, they, there is no security agent over there. Nobody is there. The accident that happened, uh, I think everybody has been evacuated, and the vehicles are left there. So you see guys trying to break into it to take whatever they see. You see some of them carrying um, tires, uh, check, and uh, whatever they see. And you see them carrying fuel. I think they are fetching water, which is very, very dangerous. It is very, very dangerous. And the sun is coming out at this, at this time. There can be explosion at any time. Yeah, any time I hope you are... Fuel, I, I, I was going to say, I hope you are at a, at a safe to distance. The, to the gutters, to the estate. Yeah, I was saying, I hope you are at a safe distance. And can you also confirm if there's any security agent or um, a LASEMA um, official there? 
no security agent available for now. Uh, is any, so any I, official I, I, of uh, Lagos State Emergency Management Agency? No, I, I see nobody around for now. So I had to put a call across to them on the emergency line 767, and a response was given to me immediately, and they confirmed everything. And so they said they are going to send a response team immediately after the call. So I'm still waiting to see what time they will arrive. All right, brilliant. As I'm talking to you now, I'm not, I'm not close to that place because I was threatened that if I try to bring out my equipment, I will be stabbed. They showed me knife, two edge knife. That if I try it, they would deal with me, deal with my family. So, so I have to leave that place, come into the estate. And I'm talking to you now. I'm in the Osadala estate for security reasons. All right, um, that's our cameraman. Remember to stay safe and stay at a safe distance. Uh, and uh, would, of course, uh, be connecting with you as quickly as possible uh, once again. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get to Please come again. We will reconnect with you. We'll be speaking with you again soon. Thank you very much for what you've shared with us. And remember to stay safe. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. So it, it brings us back to the question now. Uh, let's say that the kind of leaders we have is a reflection of who we are. A corrupt society would always throw up corrupt leaders. What do, and, and, what do and, our leaders do to our petroleum products? What do they do to the resources of our country? When you see, when citizens see report, hear report of people taking public funds willingly, and that's why everybody believes that he has a right to it. It's pretty vandalism mentality that characterize, and it's unfortunate that this is 8.38 in the morning. This thing is happened very close to the seat of government in Lagos State. And you have not seen an emergency response to that effect. And that even the life of someone going about giving us an accurate report was threatened. Knife were, knives were brought out, and his family and everything was threatened. And yet, you have emergency response, and then the funds are voted for this, for LASEMA, for all this type of agency, for FEMA and the rest of it. And then we have not seen, just, it's happening in the art of Lagos. It's not happening in Nepal. You know about this time last year, something happened in Abuli Udu, or what is it called, along uh, Badagri, where, that, where we had that explosion, that yes. the governor took pictures to the president in Abuja. Hopefully we'll take another picture to the president in Abuja concerning that. It comes down to where we started from. What's the value of an average? And have it life. You see, it's unfortunate that in 1999, when this democratic experience started, a lot of people took a back stage because they didn't have any confidence in this democratic experience because of the southeast that um, the June 12th annulment um, 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 gave, gave, gave to a lot of a lot of Nigerian concern. But we don't have to give up. We just have to engage in this process if you really want to move this nation forward. And that's why I'm saying that everyone that is watching, every Nigerian, once you are 18 years and above, please join a political party. Or at least get a voter's card. Get a vote. Join a political so party. So the challenge with joining a political party, Mr. Adibai, you're coming in um, also with the same question uh, very soon, but the problem with joining a political party is the Nigerian political parties do not have ideologies. No Nigerian wants to get stuck to a political party that suddenly has leadership that he doesn't agree with. But you already have that membership. And so if you have political parties that had actual ideologies um, that you truly believe in, and you know those ideologies will not change in the next 10, 15, 20 years, then you can encourage a Nigerian to join a political party. So I, I would rather, you know, yes, join a political party, but most importantly is to get registered to vote, have a voter's card, get involved in, in the electoral process um, as a Nigerian. As long as you're 18, there's no excuse why you should not um, uh, you know, get uh, involved in the electoral process. And, well, and then apart, apart from the fact that, you know, we're asking that people should get in the electoral process because we constantly see um, uh, the issue of how people constantly sell their vote for the fact that, yes, uh, you know, w we need to get monies and vote for. And so you find out that whoever has, who pays higher, you know, gets the vote and all of that. And then we also want to say that, um, you know, it's a function of poverty 
So the people are hungry, the people are poor, and that whatever it is that they can get at the time, you know, is what they can get, and they don't do care about all of that. But, you know, um, I just think that it goes beyond all of that. We need, you know, constant education, voter education, sensitization, citizenship education, you know, to get to the point that we actually really, really deserve, because we can't continue like this. I'm also thinking that 2023 will come. We have not learned anything from 2015, 2019, and we're going to probably repeat the same thing we did you know in this different uh, you know this election years that i've actually mentioned and it would still be the same thing so we keep going in that particular circle all right so let's uh let's also um mr debai i know you're eager to jump in but we also want to quickly do something we want to try the lagos state emergency response uh, number 767 um uh, and see if we can get to speak with them uh, with regards to the incident at otedola uh, bridge this morning. I think our, our controllers will, will do that and uh, we'll see if we can quickly dial and have that conversation with them this morning. Okay. Um, good morning. Okay, well, it says that the call was dropped. So we're going to try and redial and see if we can speak with them this morning and give them information on what's going on there. And you also get to find out, um, you know, how soon, you know, before their officials get there. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. What's your majesty? Uh, good morning. Uh, we're calling with regards to uh, an incident at Otedola Bridge. We have reports that there are sir? people... Can you hear me clearly? Um, I can. I will protect you from... Shift a little bit from that place so that I can hear you. My voice is very cool from that place. Okay, well, we're going to have to struggle to get information to you. I'm calling with regards the challenge at the accident on Otedola Bridge. Did you hear that? Okay, sir. Um, okay, sir. Okay, so can you quickly share with us what's the latest on the Otedola Bridge incident? We have reports that there are people scooping petrol from uh, one of the vehicles involved in the accident. Uh, sir, uh, this is... Uh, sir, I would suggest my first is echo from that place. I... I, I I just want to get it clearly because what I'm saying, I could hear it from here, and which is disturbing me at this time. Can you hear me now? Can you hear that, sir? Yes, I did. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. So I am calling with regards the accident on the Otedola Bridge. Did you hear that? I can hear you. What I'm not saying, okay, let me go straight. After this line you call, it's um, Lagos 112 Emergency Plan. We just have to get information and escalate it okay. to the uh, the last numbers and allow you who are there at the scene of that uh, the language. Okay, so I will suggest you if you can have the PRO number of the Lastema and call the PRO so that we give you the full information, sir. Okay, well, we don't need to speak with the PRO. There is a there's a current emergency with people scooping petrol from one of the vehicles involved in the accident. I don't need to speak with the PRO to, to share that information. That's why I'm calling you. So what, would, what should be your response to that? And why, can you confirm if there are any of your staff present at the accident scene? Um, I would say why you, maybe if you don't mind, if I can keep you on hold so that uh, I can call the supervisor who will stay with you on that. All right. Uh, thank you very much. We will reconnect with you or we will call back. We're going to keep following up the incident and we'll call back. Mr. Um, Mark Adebayo, kindly go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, well, before I answer your question, I think that's the problem with the Atolila Bridge. Almost every year, a minimum of five accidents will happen in that place. And I think, I, I was asking an engineer, what's the problem? I think there's a structural issue there. And I think something has to be done, and urgently too. You know, we have two, it's one accident too, too, too many in that place, that same spot. Many lives have been lost, many properties have been destroyed. Oh, that's it. Something has to be done. You cannot wait until the next accident before the government will know that that's to do something about that place. Something definitely is wrong with that place. So, um, on, the, on the substantive uh, issue, I am, I'm trying to remember... Uh, what, uh, well, the question was, you know, with regards uh, leaders being from the same crowd of people that, you know, we're speaking about. So if we have the leaders continue, uh, we're, we're picking the leaders from a pool of Nigerians, does that necessarily mean that Nigerians themselves are a challenge or a problem? Uh, because the leaders aren't coming from other countries. They're coming from, Niger from Nigeria itself. Exactly. 
Uh, first and foremost, I want to disagree with my sister. I said that uh, maybe we have corrupt leaders because we Nigerians are corrupt. No, no, no. That is a that is a negative generalization. Uh, it is not. It is not. We, we are all of us are victims of bad leadership in this country, and it's not because we are all bad. The the issue is that one of the challenges we have been having is that the good people that the, that the people who can handle this country, you know, do do not show sufficient interest in the governance of this country. Let me give you an instance. In 1999. After we have battled with the military and we set the military packing, the civil society decided to to, 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 to stay back. People like Beko, people like Ganifawe, people like Fedfala and Co. You know, at a meeting in Lagos said, okay, we have done our bit, we should not participate in the in the political process. And then we allowed okay, also all manner of uh, people who you can call political miscreants came in and took over uh, took over the space. Now we are struggling to to after fighting, after some of us, this is a bullet wound in my hand. You know, under Jibo Bridge, I got this one for under Jibo. So uh, after we have done all that, confronted the military, many of the people who died, many went to jail. And immediately, <clears throat> when the democratization process began, all the civil society activists, most, most, most of them, you know, withdrew from the political process. It's only uh, people like Tino Booz, Avikuyo uh, um, Mis, and co, a few of uh, people who are in Nadeko and co, who part very few of them participated in the, in the political process. And that is because of a total misjudgment of the situation. I will still have good people in this country. I keep saying we still have committed people in this country who are sitting at the, at the back bench and not participating in the political process. And therefore, not giving Nigerians you know, the capacity, the, the, the choice to, to make good choice, electoral choices. You you said that political parties do not have choices, uh, do not have uh, ideologies. No, I disagree with you. You have not studied political parties of Nigeria to know that uh, some of the Koa Party, for instance, you know, has a social welfareism as its ideology. I, I know of NRP and other political parties that are uh, for uh, ideology. Okay, assuming without considering that parties do not have ideology, they have manifestos. They have manifestos. And uh, if they have manifestos, you must be able to agree with one or a set of manifestos or not. So take that as your ideology. If you have, if you know the objectives of a political party, it suffices. It suffices, you know, for you to know that where you belong, where you can, the manifesto of this party and, and the rest of that. Every Nigeria, like you said, 18 years and above, must aspire to join a political party of their choice. And that is why we disagree with the premise of limiting the number of political parties in this country, so that citizens can have a right to pick from what we are ever they want to they, they want to pick up where they feel comfortable that they can give expression to their political choices. And it's very important uh, for, for citizens to liberate the country. We should not expect United Nations, we should not liberate uh, expect UFOs to come and help us. We are Nigerians. We are the citizens of this country. We must participate in the political processes, both as contenders and as electorate, to ensure that. We build a country of our dream. We build a country of our vision. It is not enough to condemn A or B. He's corrupt. He's competent. He doesn't have certificate. He's too old. He's this and that. What are you doing? Are you contesting? And if we are not contesting, who should we vote for? We, we, All right, Mr. Adebayo. We, we, citizens must begin to come together now to, to seek for competent people in this country and put pressure on them to come and run. To come and run. I keep wondering up to now why... I'm trying to avoid the uh, mentioning this, but I cannot understand why somebody like Fola Diola, somebody like uh, uh, Professor Adesino of the, uh, the of the African Bank and all those people are not coming into the political fray to participate in the political process. You know, uh, they, 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 some of them came in and they saw the maybe the rot and ran away. No, you don't run away. You you, you stay in there and you clean the rot and then you you make, you make sure a change does not come easily. You know, we need to create, we have to have a revolutionary mindset. Don't say, you know, somebody will say, because they will send talks after me, because they will fight me. Yeah, yeah they will fight you. They will fight you. That is it. It's, it's not, you need the political, anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. That is why talks and miscreants take over political processes when the good people withdraw, because they are afraid of, no, do not be afraid of violence. You go in there, you are bringing negative energy, you counter them with positive energy and take over the political processes. So you don't run right. away from them. Don't say because they, you don't have money, uh, the kind of money they have. You go in, let us come together, mobilize the people and go and take over the political parties so that you can take the structures of this country and let us save this country. You can't sit back. These people do not, the ruling clique do not have the interest to make you safe and secure and prosperous in your country. It is your responsibility. It is my responsibility for us to take over 
our the destiny of this country. We cannot sit back and, and be playing the blame game every time. Blame, you blame them from today to tomorrow. It is the destiny of me and my children and you and your children that is at stake. And we must not leave it. There is a Yoruba saying that says that you do not leave the, uh, the, the, the dead mother of a bad man to him, to bury. Because if you leave it to him, it's going to be a problem to the society. Because he can decide to cook it and eat it. He can decide to leave it unburied. So you, we need to rescue this country. And it is my responsibility, it is your responsibility in that studio to participate in the political process and ensure that we give Nigeria, we make Nigeria the place that we want to be. We should stop running away abroad. Okay, so, um, you know, in all of this, because at the end of the day, we're looking at uh, a process where we're contributing a different quota to ensure that, you know, we have a society that we want. And it's always very easy for us to make reference to some of these countries. And these countries were not created by spirit. Human beings actually, you know, uh, made these countries that we constantly make reference to. And not that they are perfect entirely because there's no perfect system, but of course you get to a point where the basic things and, you know, uh, certain things are taken care of. So let's look at some of the laws. For instance, there are little things uh, in the system. When you say there's a law of social contract, there's an agreement. Government, you would provide X, Y, Z for the people, and in turn the people would do X, Y, Z, respect the laws, pay taxes, and all of that. So um, for as things as respecting the traffic lights, obeying traffic laws, or respecting you know, the traffic lights, paying taxes, um, just showing respect to the national anthem when it's been, um, you know, you hear the national anthem, and those little roles and responsibility that citizens are supposed to you know, respect or part of their quota. That's, you, you find out that that doesn't happen you know, most of the time in our policy. I'm not saying a lot of people don't respect the laws. So could it, whose fault is it at this point in time? Because I, I would all, I still, I, I'm still of the opinion that we are where we are today because of the kind of people that we are. Tomorrow you become a senator and there's some kind of you know, threats and patterns and behavior that you have inculcated. You have already started, you know, in your little sphere of control, where you control, you're already meddling with funds, you're already diverting funds, wherever it is that you're in charge of. And then you will take it, you know, to the, to, to the Senate, wherever it is that you are. So, but who do we now put the blame on? The fact that people do not do the needful. You find out that people d dispose things indiscriminately. These are some of the behaviors that will contribute to developing our society. So, whose responsibility is it? Is it the responsibility of government? Or is it the responsibility of the people who, or is it that the people do not know that they should behave in a certain way? It's a joint responsibility. And for us, providing a solution to this problem is very simple. One, we need to legislate on the number of parties we have. We are able to have the experience of June 12 because the choice was limited to two. Anything that is more than two becomes a problem of choice. See, I lay before you life and death. It's either you choose God or the devil. You have two eyes, you have two nostrils. So those that put this democratic process in place knew what they were doing when they came up with the multi-party system. Now, it's to further cause division. So we need to legislate on that. Parties at the national level, if you don't have membership at the National Assembly, after one electoral cycle, it's evidently clear that we have always had two parties. In 1999, it was, it was PDP and APP with AD match with APP. And we have had that cycle on and on and on. And, and I think we need to do that. Once we do that, then we can, Nigerians can go and register with this party. We own the body polity. We control the system. After a while, we take control of the political, um, of the political system. You said something about uh, patriotism. I teach research methodology in media and communication, for example. I tell people, um, you can't carry out research except you operationalize sometimes. You turn concept into construct. When someone comes on TV and said, you know what, you are not patriotic, what are the indices of you that you have used to measure patriotism? So patriotism could be measured in terms of recitation of the national anthem, obedience of traffic rule, and payment of taxes as at when due. Now, if you do all of that, it shows that you have high level of patriotism. If you do two, it shows low level, um, average level of patriotism. If you do one, it shows low level of patriotism. If you do nothing, it shows you have no patriotism. Now, if you use that as a yardstick, do our politicians pay taxes? Do they recite the but national? Two, two, no, two, two no, wrongs no, can no, never no. make a right. Do they recite the national anthem? No, no, but you they only recite half of the national anthem. You know the second stanza of the national anthem. Time will not permit me, I will recite it for you. Which is an indictment. O oh God of creation, direct our noble cause. Do we have a cause in this nation? Guide our leaders right. 
That's a technical. Guide our leaders right. Help our youth the truth. Guide our leaders right because they always do the wrong thing. They will send wrong priorities. Help our youth the truth to know. You will know the truth and the truth will set you. In love and honesty to grow. Do we love one another? And living just and true. Are we just in this nation where somebody will score two, will get admission, and somebody will score 190 and they will not get admission? To build a nation where we peace and justice. So if you look at the fundamental principle underlining this nation, do we live by those values? Until we uphold those values, we will never have a nation. And if we really want to have people to own the body polity, we must legislate on the number of political parties and ask people to join. If I join in my local government, there is no way one person will sit in Bodilon or will sit in Abuja or will sit in Kafancha and will dictate for us. That's why we are able to have June 12. Because we use option A4. You have to go back to your basis. It starts from where? Option A4 is you start from your ward. That's the first level. That's where you elect councillors. Then you go to the local government. But G.D. Johnson, I'm sorry to cut in here. I'm, I'm really sorry. The, the, you have mentioned a point which I think is very valid, that we need to uphold some of these values. Whether or not we join political parties, if we don't uphold these values, it becomes nonsense. Because at the end of the day... The police uh, break the law. Police so, drive so, against so, so, traffic. So the governor think... drives against... People, people look at the leadership. Do you see the so leadership but, but, of other countries? But the leadership come from the society. No! You see... They, the, they, they don't come from a different space. Well, we didn't, we didn't well, take them from um, a different part of the sadly world. Sadly, we would have to wrap up here. Um, uh, J.D. Johnson, it's Mark Adebayo. <laughs> it's a pleasure to <laughs> be with you. Thank you both. Uh, it was a very interesting discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Procedia Bika, for always bringing people interest uh, topics. Thank you very Thank much you. for I'm joining us. I'm waiting for you to declare your presidency of governorship. So, Thank you very much. I think I should go for the governor of Lagos State. That will be better. Let's start. Charity begins at two. <laughs> so, if they don't allow you to be so PDP, join one of these uh, new generation political parties. You All right, sir. We give, it, we give it a thought, sir. And we call for more consultation. <laughs> Thank you Thank very you. much. It's a, it's a Thank pleasure. You. Let me give you. For let me greet you. Stopping by. <laughs> it's a pleasure. The TV, to be Inca, the TV of the year. Thank you very much. <laughs> And to our viewers, uh, thank you for staying with us all through. If you missed out, remember where to catch up. It's simply a Plus TV Africa on all social media platforms, including, including uh, YouTube. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Boko. Do have yourself a wonderful 2022.